Hello. Everyone is talking about hydrogen during the last years. Hydrogen is cool. Hydrogen is good. We can use hydrogen in fuel cells. There are some engines uh, working with hydrogen. Hydrogen has a lot of drawbacks, especially when we're trying to use them to use it in portable applications. And in fuel cells, it happens the same. A lot of fuel cells can work with hydrogen, especially low temperatures. But there are still a lot of disadvantages because hydrogen is a gas and will have a lot of risk problems if we're trying to put it inside a vehicle and try to use it directly. So as an alternative, I propose you to have a look at this presentation in which we will have a look at direct methanol fuel cells, direct ethanol fuel cells as well, as an alternative to the use of hydrogen in fuel cells. As we said before, uh, hydrogen has several problems, especially related to its storage, transport and delivery because it's a gas and also some risk because it's especially explosive and highly explosive when it's mixed with the air. Mm. So when we're trying to store hydrogen, we usually need to use high pressures and low temperatures in order to obtain a liquid hydrogen. This is obviously, uh, this means that the cost of the operation will increase and then we will have to take it into account, apart from, as I said before, some other risks and disadvantages. So, a possibility, a possibility is to use uh, another compounds which are not hydrogen, like methanol or ethanol, which are alcohols with very low molecular weight. In this case, the reactions, electrochemical reactions, which will take place, will be these ones that you can read in this slide. There's not many changes indeed. Um, we still have the oxidation at the anode of uh, either the ethanol or either methanol and the production of electrons, which will mean that we will have electricity after all. So if this, considering the main scheme of a hydrogen fuel cell with the anode, the hydrogen coming through this compartment and the cathode with the oxygen coming through this other, there are not many differences if we consider the scheme of a methanol fuel cell. Indeed, um, an alternative is to use directly uh, methanol instead of hydrogen in fuel cells which have been already um, fabricated, constructed. You see here the reactions that we mentioned before and the configuration is um, very easy but in this case uh, the input, the fuel input will be methanol and water and not hydrogen. Obviously uh, the important thing of, of these reactions, the important thing of using methanol and ethanol is the fact that they are liquid at room temperature. This means that for storage and for risks we will have a lot of advantages because it's easier to store it, obviously, to store it liquid at room temperature than gases. And uh, we will also save money uh, because we won't have to pressurize them or liquefy them. Very interesting. Indeed, some of the infrastructures that are already used for gasoline engines will be also available for these methanol or ethanol fuel cells. Well, Methanol and ethanol can be potentially obtained from uh, well, using renewable energies, yeah? especially from the biomass, very important, very interesting, by different or through different processes like combustion, fermentation or gasification. Yeah? And we can use them in fuel cells, but we could also use them in turbines and engines. Yeah? Indeed, some of the cars, well, some of the vehicles, I would say the, the great majority of the vehicles in Brazil, do work with ethanol, which is obtained from renewable energies, in engine uh, or engines, um, well, cars, not fuel cells. But again, the point is that the infrastructure in terms of uh, the reservoir, the tanks, the distribution will be very, very similar to that used in these cases. There are different ways of obtaining methanol. Uh, we can obtain methanol by chemical processes following these, uh, these reactions uh, or by the process as well. 
Um, these processes will be will have a certain cost as well in terms of money and also probably energy. So maybe it is more interesting to find them or to obtain it by using metabolic processes yeah, like these ones you can see in this slide anaerobic fermentation like fermentation or the use of lignocellulosic residual mm. this is uh, something we've also talked about in other modules and other presentation in this course and um, we can either have we can either use methanol or ethanol in this case directly for the oxidation of the anode or we can reform it to form hydrogen, which is hidden here, yeah? and then use hydrogen at the anode. And, well, this will depend on which is your strategy or your strategy for your fuel cell and which is the cost of the operation. One of the most important problems of the so called direct methanol fuel cells, which are the cells that use methanol for its oxidation is the so-called crossover phenomenon. This crossover phenomenon consists on the flux of methanol through the electrolyte and its reaction with the oxygen at the cathode. As you may remember, because I know you've studied this very hard, um, electrolyte must separate the anode, which is here, and the cathode, which is here, and, which, and must transport the protons from one part to the other to close electrochemical reaction. But it must also separate the different compounds involved in the electrochemical reaction. This is, in this case, methanol and oxygen. In hydrogen fuel cells we don't have this problem because uh, both hydrogen and oxygen are gases and these, well, the membranes which are usually applied in this kind of well, hydrogen fuel cells are very impermeable to gases but when we try to use the same type of membranes in direct methanol fuel cells we will see, we find that part of the methanol is transported through the electrolyte and it reacts here. Why? Because obviously the chemical composition of the polymer will have an important effect on the transport and solubility of methanol on the protons. So, which is the solution for this problem? Well, lately research has been focused on obtaining a biphasic structure. We're using a biphasic structure, we need to separate the different transport mechanisms that we're going to have through the electrolyte, which are the proton conductivity, which is good, we like that, which is the water contents, which could be potentially good as well, and the methanol on ethanol permeability. This is the factor that we want to decrease, because as we said before, um, if we have high permeabilities of methanol, we will have high crossover phenomenon. And this is bad, because if methanol reacts at the cathode, what we will have is a reduction on the electricity that we obtain. Mm? So we really need to get rid of this crossover. So what should we do? Well, basically we should try to discriminate the different processes for the transport of methanol and the protons. One of the most important transport mechanisms for proton, um, for proton conduction was the so-called vehicular mechanism. In, this, in that case the proton was somehow um, was being driven by other molecules like water or methanol from one part to the other of the electrolyte. So that would be very bad for us eh, because apart from transporting hydrogen, well in this case protons, sorry, we will be also transporting methanol molecules and we don't want that. So we need to separate and maybe to use more hydrogen bonding rather than molecular mechanism, if we want to have low crossover values. Apart from the reduction of crossover, which can cause losses in a potential quite big, we also need or, uh, some other uh, factors which are decreasing the yield of this kind of fuel cells, are those related to low anodic kinetics or mass transfer problems, because we're going to have um, some CO2 produced at the cathode and it may cause some problems related to mass transport. So these are some of the improvements that must be carried out 
especially those related to catalyst, those related to electrolyte uh, concerning crossover, and also those related to the materials used uh, for the electrodes, if we want to avoid this mass transfer effect. In conclusion, these are very interesting fuel cells, potentially good, uh, especially in portable applications, because using methanol or ethanol at the anode will avoid some problems related to the use of hydrogen, which is not bad, but still have a lot of drawbacks, especially related to risks and storage. But DMFC and DEFC, direct methanol and ethanol fuel cells, must still be improved if they want to be competitive respect to other fuel cells, which are already in the market. In this case, one of the most important effects is the so-called crossover phenomenon, which is the um, flux of unreacted methanol or ethanol through the electrolyte. These, some other anodic factors and some mass trans effects are um, the features that must be improved if we want to have direct methanol fuel cells in the market very soon. And I hope the next time that I see you, um, this is a reality, Thank you uh, for your attention.